Perhaps you're like me and you've used the words shade and shadow interchangeably as two different words to describe the same thing. But in drawing, there is an important and very helpful distinction between the two. And if we understand it, it will help us observe our subjects more carefully, more accurately. And therefore, it will help us to create more accurate and interesting drawings. So what is the difference between shade and shadow? We have here a simple object. Imagine we have a light source up higher off the page shining down on our object. And because the light source is up high and on the right hand side, the shape of the object means that the light doesn't reach all parts of the object. And so, and so one side of the object is not lit up by the light. Now in the way I'm using the words shade and shadow, this side of the object is in shade. So shade is the word we use to describe where light can't reach a portion of an object because the shape of the object covers part of itself from that light source. Well, shadow then, as you've possibly guessed, is where the shape of an object stops that same light source from reaching other objects. In this case, such as the ground. And so this is the object shadow. So shade is the darkened part of an object where the object shape stops the light from reaching it. Shadow is a darkened portion of another object or objects where the shape of the first object stops the light from reaching these other objects. In this case, and as is often the case, the ground. But as we'll see, there are certainly many other possibilities as well. And there are two very important things to know about the difference between shade and shadow besides what they are. The first is that shade is lighter than shadow. Shade is lighter than shadow. And not because I've drawn it that way here. I've drawn it that way here because that's how it is in real life. The second thing is that shade is warmer than shadow. And while that's not going to be a part of what we're looking at in this video, because my drawings are monochromatic, it's important to realize if we're using color, that shade is a warmer temperature than shadow is. Now it's one thing just to talk about this in a little cube two point perspective diagram, but can we see it in real life? Here's a tower inside Windsor Castle. Now the sun is clearly up high on the right hand side. And we can see that because of the shape of the tower and the position of the sun, the sun can't reach this side of the tower. Therefore, this is shade. The wall that runs behind the tower, the sun can reach. And we can see that here and here. But because of the angle of the sun, this tower is actually blocking the sun from reaching this section here. Therefore, because the light is prevented from reaching this section by the shape of this tower, this is shadow. So here we have shade and shadow right next to each other. To make it a bit easier to see, I've printed this picture out in black and white, and I've made a slight adjustment to slightly increase the exposure and also to slightly increase the contrast to bring out the difference more between these two walls. It becomes easily seen on the video that this shadow here is in fact darker than this shade. And if the color version was clearer, we could more easily see that the brickwork on the shade side is warmer tone than the brickwork in the shadow, even though it's exactly the same materials. So here we have a narrow alleyway in Paris. By looking at what part of our picture is lit up, we can see that the sun is, if you like, behind our shoulder, high in the sky. This means the shape and position of the buildings on this side of the road are not having the light reach them. And so these buildings are in shade. The buildings on the left side of the street, the sunlight is hitting them, except where the shape and size of these buildings are blocking the light from reaching. Therefore, this side, the buildings are in shadow. This shade is darker than this shade 
of grey. I've printed this in black and white. It does make clear that the colour here is darker than the colour here. The street becomes very dark as well because it's in shadow. Our third example is the dome of the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. In this instance, the sun is on the left hand side of our object and it's not as high in the sky as it has been in the other examples. If we look at this little decorative tower on the left hand side, we can see that the sun is striking it full on on the left hand side, but because of the angle of the sun and the shape of the building, the light can't reach this side, so it's in shade. When we look at the large dome, we see that the sun can't reach these sections of the dome, and so they are also in shade. And likewise, in this small tower, the sun can't reach this side of this small tower, and it's in shade. When we look at this tower over here, we can see that it's much darker because it's in shadow, because this large drum and dome is casting a shadow on top of this section of the building. The tone here is much darker than here or here because shadow is darker than shade. When we look back on this large dome, we can see that this small tower here also casts a shadow on it. And we can see that here. And it's quite easy to see that this shadow is in fact a darker color than this shade because shadow is darker than shade. And if we look at this section of the balustrade and the lower part of this drum, we can see that this section, not this whole wall, but this section of the balustrade is in shade. But here it casts a shadow on this section. And we can see that this is a darker color than this. When we look at real life situations, we can see that in fact shadowed areas are darker and cooler than shaded areas. Is it really worth worrying about this distinction when we're drawing and applying tone? I want to focus on one small section of this scene, this section here. I've also reduced it to black and white to make it easier to see. Because of the position of the sun to the upper left, this building side and this building side are in shade. And also see that underneath the cornice and underneath these dormant roof areas are in shade. And we can see that this side of the window edging is in shade and the underneath is in shade. But if we focus on just these two windows, we can see that not just is there shade, but that it also casts a shadow. There is approximately a line there and there, if we look carefully, where we can see there is a shadow being cast because it's in fact darker than that part of the window framing which is merely in shade. The shadow darkens what's happening with the shade. We see the same thing if we look above to this dormer window. This triangular wedge side of the dormer window is in shade. But in addition to that, because of the angle of the sun and the shape of the window, there is a darker section where this overhanging roof line casts a shadow that goes down over the wall of the dormer. And so again, we have a darker section of shadow on top of a lighter section of shade. If we look at this downpipe here, you can see that part of the downpipe, because of its round shape, is protected from the sun. It's in shade. But behind the downpipe, a much darker line, which is the shadow of the downpipe against the wall. While the tone of the shade on the downpipe matches pretty closely the tone on the side wall, we can also see that the strength of tone in the shadow matches more the strength of tone in the shadow in the windows. Does it make a difference? I applied tone to this drawing of that section just using the one shade of tone regarding shade and shadow as the same thing. If I compare it with the same scene where I used two different shades, one for shade and one for shadow, I hope we can see that it simply gives more opportunity for variety, therefore visual interest in our drawing. It's a subtle thing, but the subtle things are often the things that push our drawings from looking good to looking quite remarkable. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. Is it really worth bothering with the distinction? The difference I've pointed out in this video, regardless of what words you want to use, is real. Shadow is darker than shade. 
shadow is a cooler temperature if we're thinking of color than shade. And if I know what I'm looking for when I'm observing my reference photo, it's like understanding perspective. It's easier to see it accurately. And if I collect accurately all the visual data which I need to draw, when I look away from my subject and draw, easier for me to do because I know what I'm trying to do more thoroughly. It's why over and over again in my videos, I talk about the importance of observation. We can't draw what we haven't seen. And the biggest problem is we think we observe better than we do. And drawing what we think we've seen seldom gives the result that we're really after. And that's why I have all these videos on observation when drawing. So if you haven't seen any of them, it's worth going to have a look. Look, the important thing is don't get so hung up on all of this that it stops being fun. So keep drawing, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye.